What's up, everybody? Christian Fowler here with Bluff City Media. Joining me is Kenny Stubblefield, so you know what that means. Breaking news, and today, bigger than most days, and this time yeah. in a negative way. So it was announced on Wednesday morning that Memphis head coach Penny Hardaway will be suspended for the first three games of the season, those three games being Jackson State on the road against Missouri and then back at home against Alabama State. Uh, the NCAA said that the violations were uh, – or that the suspension was due to violations, recruiting violations during the 2021-2022 academic calendar. Kenny, what do we think? How are we feeling about Penny not being available for the first three games of the season? Well, I mean, obviously, any time your head coach is suspended for any game, it's not a good look. Obviously, yeah. you look at the schedule, the first three, the first three games, and you think, you know, Alabama State and uh, Jackson State. You're like, okay, that they'll be fine. Uh, but again, I mean, Memphis has had this kind of cloud hanging over them for so long that it's it's never a good thing to be. For, for something like this to come down, three games is not that much. It's not that big of a deal. The Tigers are going to be fine. It's over with, but it's just, it's a little bit disconcerting. And it's like, man, I, you know, you, you hate it for Penny Hardaway and for the team, honestly. Yeah, it's more of an optics thing than any, anything else. That's right? 100% like it, what it is. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Like it's not going to affect the season. I mean, maybe, maybe it could change the outcome of that Missouri game, but still the second game of the year, even though that will be a quality sec opponent is not going to end the season. I, I don't think. And then, like you said, the other two games being Alabama state and Jackson state, two games Memphis should win regardless of who's on the sideline. So really, it, it comes down to optics, that it doesn't look good that your coach has been suspended for the first three games of the year, but I, I'm i not overreacting to it. Like, I know it pisses a lot of people off. Uh, I've seen some. It, it, every time there's an issue, it's 50-50, right? Like, half the people feel one way, half the people feel the other way. I've seen a lot of pushback of, you know, this sucks that, you know, our program carries this and it shows on the program that our coach is suspended and constantly – uh, involved with NCAA, yada yada yada, and then you have the other half of the people saying, "Who cares? This is it doesn't really matter." And, and that's where I'm at. Like, I get it. I understand. Like, it makes big headline news because Penny is suspended, and it's Penny Hardaway, and it's recruiting violations, whatever. But it it is what it is. Like, I'm not I'm not concerned about it. I I, I get it. I get that the optics don't necessarily look great, but it doesn't. It doesn't really change my. It's not a big. Anything. It's not a big needle mover for you, and and no. And, and I guess I guess the question is, and I'll push this question to you, Christian. Is do you think this has any impact on future recruiting with Memphis, the Memphis Tigers, and Penny Hardaway? No, I mean they didn't cut scholarships or anything. No, I mean obviously there's some. Some 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 of the the things that happened, I think some of the the, the things that the NCAA put down is it lowers their amount of the recruiting visits they can have at the Lori Walton practice facility. Um, it lowers, um, I think, in home visits they can have. Um, they get another year of added probation to the three years that the IARP already put on them last year. Um, but in terms of the negative the negative recruiting that can happen with things like this you don't think a player would go well, well what's going on at memphis i'm not going to go there because i could get wrapped up in some of this nonsense you think that's kind of over that's that's not even a possibility no no i don't think so like you th maybe five years ago you could have a, a player or two in a class that would be like uh i don't know that's kind of shady it's all about money dude it doesn't matter they're not worried about ncaa yeah. infractions and violations this is more news that brings negative light as far as boosters and big time fans and stuff. That's where that's where the negativity is carried towards, not necessarily towards recruiting. Like even like in this day and age, I don't even know if if another team would would negatively use that as recruiting. They probably would try, but I just don't see that being an effective strategy. And also, like I said, in this day and age, it's about money. It's about NIL. It's about what can you do for me. And having an NCAA infraction, 
that doesn't doesn't really change that. Now, if they if they did something as far as limiting scholarships, obviously yes, that right. that That's is a big, big deal. deal. If yeah, if if they did something, you know, that, that changes the way that you can recruit as a whole, then yes, that's a big deal. But as far as this goes, no, I don't think it, it impacts recruiting. Uh, Kenny, just to get a little bit more in, Mm -hmm. in the weeds of things. I know I've been, I've had a crazy day today, so I really haven't been able to like read a ton into this, but you've, you've been on top of it all day and, and following along with it for those who, you know, haven't done that for those who haven't been able to check it out if they've been at work or, tied up all day go a little bit more in depth on on what exactly happened and what the ncaa said and and we also got a statement from the university of memphis athletic department but for those who don't know just break it down a little bit more in depth well and i think honestly i woke up this morning kind of surprised by this i i knew that a lot of this stems out of these recruiting violations that were found were found during the initial iarp um investigation and what I um, they're they're not connected to the I, I, IARP allegations that were made that were wrapped up into that investigation that dogged the Tigers for so long. But it was something that they found. And I think what it was found was it was found by the university. And so the university reported um, it report self-reported. And um, what the statement that the University of Memphis officials put out was that the, the University of Memphis and the athletic administration accepted whatever the, the the they had self-imposed some sanctions and things like that. But Penny Hardaway chose to fight these allegations. He chose to kind of go through the investigatory process. Um, yeah, and let, me, let, let me read a quote from from that statement real quick before you continue. Uh, this is kind of the second half of it. As we were navigating the IARP process at the time the violation was discovered, We felt it was in our best interest to work through the NCAA's negotiated resolution process. We supported Coach Hardaway's Hardaway's right to work directly with the NCAA on his portion of the case, and we strongly believe Coach Hardaway never intentionally committed a violation. The University of Memphis is committed to compliance. We will learn from this incident and be even more diligent in our education and monitoring. Now that the entirety of this case is finalized, we will move forward in support of Coach Hardaway and our men's basketball program as we do all our programs. I mean, just a full-throated um, support of, of Penny Hardaway and, you know, the, the fact that the, the mistake that happened, the, the violation that occurred was not a, um, a, a willful act of, of, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like, it wasn't willful. Yeah. It was an accident. What? So, so you, what exactly was that? Like, what exactly are they saying happened so, and, and was done? What was the violation? I want to give a big shout out to Jason Munns over the Commercial Appeal, who absolutely has been doing an incredible job of reporting the facts on the case. Um, and so, honestly, in terms of my keeping up with it, it's been through reading his. Through, through Jason. Yeah. Through Jason's reporting. Basically, this is what Jason has said happened. is Multiple sources um, are confirming that um, former assistant coach Cody Toppert, who is now at LSU, um, conducted um, an initial impermissible in-home visit with a recruit that was a junior during the 21-22 season, which would make that that player a class of 24 player or Three. 23 player, 23 player. Yeah. Um, and so this this player initially Cody Topper had an an initial impermissible in-home visit. Now the the ruling on that I think is, is that when a player is a junior, you're not allowed to visit in in home. You have to visit at the school, the high school, whatever institution of, of learning there at that's where you do your first initial visits as when the, when the prospect is a junior. Now, when they're seniors, you can do in-home visits, they can start taking um, school visits to colleges, things like that. That's where the, re- the recruitment kind of changes from someone who's a junior in high school to someone who's a senior. Um, and so the reporting is, is that initially Cody Toppert went to um, had an impermissible in-home visit. And then a few weeks later, um, Penny Hardaway went to the had an in-home visit with that same recruit. Um, now, from what I gather, um, Penny Hardaway told members of the enforcement staff that he believed that he could visit any student athlete at any time. Um, and there was some, uh, from what a statement that I read is that he's saying that 
the University of Memphis Compliance Office had a, had inserted a wrong date for a for this player in terms of what age they were or when they could start being visited in a home. And so he believed because of the, that he was good, that he was fine in that regard. And so that is legitimately what this entire case is about is that former assistant coach Cody Toppert and head coach Penny Hardaway had an impermissible in-home visit with a player prior to when the NCAA rules allow them to have in-home visits by coaches. Yeah. Yeah, so it just is a cluster of a situation when you when you start looking yeah. into all all the weeds of it. But yeah, like you said before we move on, I just want to shout out Jason Mons. He has, like you mentioned, been all over it today, uh, over at the Commercial Appeal, We've been constantly updating and uh, and keep keeping people in the loop on what's going on. So uh, shout out to him for for the reporting on on everything Penny Hardaway and the suspension today. Um, let's see. I think there was something else. There was something else. What was it, Kenny? Um, so, I mean, the, the the penalties that were levied, um, separate from Penny Hardaway's suspension, um, received one year probation um, on top of the three years probation from the IARP punishment, a two week ban on all communications related to recruiting, um, a reduction of in person recruiting days by four. Uh, the loss of two official visits, which is massive if you're Penny Hardaway because you know what it is, Getting man. People he gets on people, campus. You get people on campus, it's hard for them to get away, and they get a $5,000 fine um, from the administration, um, which, I mean, obviously nobody wants to be hindered in any way when it comes to recruiting, but um, I think a lot of is going to be made of this nationally by people who who, you know, maybe haven't done as much resource uh, re uh, sourcing on this as Jason has. Um, but in the end, I would say that this seems to be relatively minor. Um, I know there are yeah. level two violations, but these seem to be relatively minor violations. So we've seen Penny Hardaway battle with the NCAA before, uh, namely with James Wiseman in that case was a huge deal and the way that he – uh, helped James fight through that stuff and really how it it kind of motivated him. Like we saw a different side of Penny. Then, Man. what do you think? What do you think this brings? Like, do you think this this puts a bigger chip on Penny's shoulder, or do you think it's business as usual? Do you think we see any any noticeable difference in Penny as far as like when we see him and talk to him in press conferences and stuff and his demeanor? Because you and I have both seen that. Like we saw the the all the smoke year, the way that the way that he approached media and, and speaking publicly. And then we saw last year how he approached it. it. It's been kind of different every year. So what do you think this does as far as his, his uh, approach his like public persona approach this year? Well, I will say this, man. I think last year was the first year that I can see. I saw a, a, a very distinct difference in the way that Penny Hardaway talked to the media. Um, I think he learned a lot over the last three years that he had been or four years that he had been the university of Memphis head coach. Um, he was very loose with th some of the things that he said, some of the reactions that he gave, whether it be towards, you know, Rick Barnes and UT or, you know, claiming we want all the smoke, you know, we're going to like immediately coming in, wanting the national championship. You know, I think all those at Jeff or getting pissed at, at Jeff Calkins, right? Like, um, and I think that, I think what I noticed a total kind of 180 in is Penny's ability to kind of not share what immediately comes to his brain to the media. Yeah. Um, and I think that that is a, that is a sign of, of kind of growth as a head coach and needing to measure your words carefully. The only time that I saw him at all last year really – react strongly in a way that kind of reminded me of the first couple of years as, uh, of him being head coach was after the FAU game. Um, he yeah. was very, very, I mean, and obviously it was the end of the season. They had lost a heartbreaker. He was very, yeah, very upset, blunt. just very yeah. blunt about the, about things. Um, I think that we are not going to see a very big change in terms of Penny Hardaway's reaction to uh, public reaction to this. He's yeah. going to be very measured in his words. Yeah. But that doesn't mean 
that this does not scenes. that behind the scenes that this is not going to be a motivating factor for Penny Hardaway. There is one thing we know about Penny Hardaway and any other high level type A uh, athletes or whatever they are. These guys work really well when they have a chip on their shoulder, and and these guys can take anything that happens and turn it into a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, that and that's I what I was gonna say. Believe. It doesn't it, it doesn't take much to put that chip on no. their shoulder. Like it, it could be a slightest it, of slights, and it's a chip. Right. Yeah. yeah, and and I'm with you. I think I think that's how he should handle himself. Like he shouldn't 100%. come out and black and blast the NCAA like he did yeah. with the James Wiseman stuff. Like that's not gonna. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to get him anywhere. I think he knows and understands that now. I think, like you said, we'll see him be very measured, calculated, kind of just business as usual in front of the camera and in front of the media. But behind the scenes, I guarantee, I mean, it's going to motivate him more. Like it, it's going to put an added chip on his shoulder. Not that he needs any more fuel, right. uh, because if if you know Penny, if you listen to Penny, like he's always motivated. Like he's a competitor. I mean, he's a former high level professional athlete turned high level college basketball coach like competition and competitiveness and fuels motivation him. it fuels him it's in his blood like yeah. it's just part of his everyday life but giving him just a little bit more gas it just it's gonna well, happen like he's gonna he's gonna this, have a little bit more fire and i'll say this about that one thing i remember specifically from that that uh two seasons ago when he had that very public outburst towards Jeff Calkins in a post game press conference is he galvanized his team and and you can see the response that the team had towards Penny after that after that incident I would not be stunned I would not be surprised at all if we saw that same type of reaction from the Memphis Tiger basketball program the players the assistant coaches, everybody from the top down rallying behind him as he's as he gets that little chip on his shoulder, even bigger, bigger now, um, them being motivated and then being ra- rallying behind of him, feeding off that energy that he provides. I, I think that's yeah. that. So it'll be interesting to see how how this motivates them throughout the summer. This might be a perfect motivation for them to grind hard this summer. Yeah. Yeah, well, like like we said, it's interesting news. It's big news. It made national headlines and news as far as sports goes. So it is. It's a big story, but at the same time, it is what it is. Like it, it it's really not going to affect that much. I don't think it's going to do anything as far as the outcome of the season. Uh, as I talked about earlier, I don't think it's going to hurt recruiting all that much. So figured we'd jump on here and break it down anyway, even though we're not overly concerned about it. But some people have different opinions on it. Some people are very concerned about it and are tired of dealing with this. And in the same vein, I get and understand that. Well, so. it's over. It's over. So there's nothing to be right. concerned about. It's over. Like, yeah, three games lost. He won't coach three games. It's over. Like, this is done. And, you, so. and we didn't even say this, but you've got a guy in Rick Stansberry. Come on, man. Who's – Who's perfect for that? Who's perfect? Yeah. To come in and I mean, it's, he's been a head coach forever. Like he's perfectly fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Rick's yeah. going to come in and handle the team perfectly fine, and it'll be cool. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and wrap this up, Kenny. Um, I wish I could say we'd break this down on the bluff later, like I did with the Chandler Lawson news the other day. But this is it for this week. Uh, Gabe and I, I'm sure we'll talk about it, get into it a little bit. Uh, next week on on the bluff. But with that being said, head over to bluffcitymedia.co. Check out all the content we've got over there. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, and we will see you guys next time.